Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, one of the topics that we're going to discuss today, I, I just want to say this very clearly, it's magnesium. Not manganese, <laughs> magnesium. Those things can be a little tricky. Is that MG or is that MN? We're talking about MG today. We're going to talk about what to do when you've got too much magnesium, but also what to do when you're short. All right, the next thing we want to talk about today is three pre-emerge herbicides in soybeans. Getting started with a great pre-emerge herbicide program is awesome. So we want to talk today about how inexpensive and why it's so important to use three pre's in soybeans. Our weed of the week today is really unique and invasive. It's gonna be a fun one to talk about, but first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. email from one of our radio listeners to Ag PhD Radio and he's in Montana this summer and he said you know what I've sprayed these weeds twice can't get them under control we haven't had rain all summer could that be the big factor here so today during our farm basics time we want to talk about controlling drought stressed weeds in most cases you can still control them but you might have to do some things just a little bit different than if growing conditions were great all right think about dry conditions what happens to plants well, they're trying to hold moisture in, so they're really closing off the outside of that leaf. They don't want to let any more moisture leave the plant. When you're applying a herbicide trying to kill that weed out in the field, it's not taking the herbicide in. So well, wait, if you're let's not talk getting about rain, why, though, it's not taking that herbicide in. Darren mentioned that plant is closing off. Well, how it does that, you've seen plants roll their leaves a little bit. But the more concerning step to us is there will be a wax that will develop on that leaf surface. And the longer it's dry and hot, the thicker that wax is going to become. So if you're going to get a herbicide into the plant, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to bust through that wax, number one. That's where instead of just spraying the herbicide or spraying it with a non-ionic surfactant, you may consider using some type of vegetable oil, or we'll call it methylated seed oil. That's probably the best thing to penetrate through that wax and get the herbicide in. The next problem with a drought stressed plant is it's just not moving a lot of stuff internally in that plant. And in order to kill any weed, you've got to get the herbicide not only in the plant, you've got to get it to the growing point. So if you don't have a weed that's actively growing, that's challenging. What you're going to have to do is bump the rate and use methylated seed oil. Well, one other thing you can do too is try to beat some of these defensive mechanisms. Like Brian talks about leaves that roll up, and we often see that in cornfields in the middle of the day. But you know what? Those leaves unfurl at night. So you've got a shot in the earlier morning hours when you can get out in that field and possibly catch that plant while it's still hopeful that it might have a good day. Also, you can simply wait until you do get some rain and then maybe the plant will at least be more actively growing, more likely to quickly move that herbicide to the growing point. But I still come back to, you know what, if I've got a plant that's under stress, I'm going to have to do some different things. I'm going to, number one, have to bump the rate as long as I can bump the rate legally. But then in addition to that, I need something else to help penetrate that wax. So those are really the two big things that I would suggest you do if you're fighting this particular issue. All right, and one thing you said there too, Brian, is just wait. And when we think about waiting, well, I don't wanna wait because that weed is gonna get really big and I'm not gonna be able to kill it. Hey, you can't kill it now. So if you're in this big rush, if I have to spray today, I have to spray today. If that crop is not growing, if that weed is not growing, if you wait a few days, how much growth is it really going to have when you're not getting any rain at all? You probably are best to just wait a few days. Once you get the rain, now's a good time to kill the weed. All right, and for me, I'm not gonna wait. I'm simply gonna bump the rate if I can. If I can't bump the rate, then yes, I'm probably stuck to wait, but I'm just gonna bump the rate, use methylated seed oil. That's probably gonna solve the problem. Well, that may solve the problem on a drought stress weed, Brian, but will it be enough to control our weed of the week? We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. We 
love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at MortonBuildings.com. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the system that makes the difference. The system I put to work. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Magnesium could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, depending on what your levels are on the farm. One of the interesting phone calls we had recently on Ag PhD Radio is we had a farmer who called in and said, Guys, I just have to tell you, I've really started correlating my soils data with my yield map, and I am finding that when I have high magnesium levels, my yields go down pretty dramatically. Also, when I have the high magnesium levels, I can plainly see I'm low on calcium, I'm low on potassium, so I assume all this plays into it. This magnesium thing is a really big deal. You've got to have enough in the plant to make yield, but if you have too much in the soil, it can inhibit potassium, it can cause major problems with drainage, so we want to talk about those things today. All right, let me start by how important magnesium is. If you go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app, type in your crop, say it's corn, say you're raising 200 bushel corn, look at how many pounds of magnesium you need. You need quite a few, yet, how many of us are actually fertilizing with magnesium? Well, depending on what part of the country you're in, you may say, well, yes, I fertilize every year. On our farm, we fertilize never. We've got an overabundance of magnesium. But magnesium is critically important to your plant because it is the center of the chlorophyll molecule. As soon as I say that, farmers are like, oh, no wonder I have to make sure I have enough of that. Yeah, it's really important. Where do we see shortages? Well, in some types of clay soils around the country, you may see a lower amount of magnesium in there. With our Montmorillonite clays that we're farming in, we've got high magnesium naturally. Normally for us, the only place we see a shortage of magnesium in the field is in lighter, sandier type soils. All right, here's the example I want to give you with magnesium to illustrate the point that it's an incredibly small element as opposed to calcium, which is incredibly large, relatively speaking. Okay, so let's say that you're standing in a gymnasium and they stack up 20 feet high worth of volleyballs. So you're standing there and you're covered by, and it's all the way up probably 14, 15 feet above your head. It's solid volleyballs in there. Are you still gonna be able to breathe? Well, yes, of course you will. In soils, what we call that is pore space. There's air space going in between those volleyballs. You get air. All right, now let's say that you're standing in the gymnasium, no more volleyballs in there. They cover you all the way up 20 feet worth of sand. Are you going to breathe anymore? Nope, you're dead. 
Why? There's not enough pore space for that air to get through. And this is the thing that we talk about all the time with magnesium. In really high magnesium soils, let's say it's 30%, 40%, 50% magnesium, we've had soils that high on our own farm, you will have very low porosity, you'll have poor drainage, there just isn't oxygen getting down into that soil. So what you want to do is change that ratio some, and that's why we talk so much about the base saturation test. We want to see calcium levels at least 65 to 80 percent. We want to see magnesium levels somewhere in the 12 to 20 percent kind of range. So if you're outside that 12 to 20 percent range, you're going to need to do something about it. And then even that range, we talk a little bit about, hey, if I've got a sandy soil, like Darren was just mentioning, a sandy soil, I might want to be up 16, 18, 20 percent magnesium. The more magnesium you have, the more the soil kind of holds together, the more water holding capacity you have. If I've got a very heavy clay soil, I might want to be down at 12 percent magnesium. I don't need as much water holding capacity. The clay already does it for me. I want more porosity in that soil. So that's kind of what you can do over a long period of time by adjusting your magnesium levels percentage wise in the soil. Well, when we've got high magnesium levels, we also typically have a higher soil pH as magnesium raises soil pH much faster than calcium does. So sometimes people will say, well, wait a minute, how can adding calcium help my situation? I've already got a pH that's higher than I'd like it. Well, if you can replace magnesium with calcium, you'll actually sometimes bring that pH down over time. The other thing we find with high magnesium levels is potassium just doesn't seem to get into the plant. So again, we want to take a look at our base saturation levels rather than just parts per million. A lot of people might say, oh, 200 parts per million on potassium, you're in great shape. Uh, no way, I can show you soils where 200 parts per million is horrific. We have terrible deficiencies with potassium. Don't just look at parts per million. You have to look at base saturation K numbers. We want the base saturation K in the 4 to 8 percent range and again, get that magnesium down. If that's in the 12 to 20 percent range, a lot of times you're going to find much better potassium availability than if you have magnesium at 40 percent. So we've identified magnesium can be either too low or too high for your soils to be productive. What do you do if you're too low? Well, the cheapest way to get magnesium is often with dolomitic lime. So yes, you're going to get calcium in the dolomitic lime, but you're also going to get quite a bit of magnesium. You can build your levels quickly. There are also other products out there, K-Mag and a number of other magnesium products. So the main thing is if you've got a magnesium deficiency or magnesium issues, it might only be in spots of fields, get that addressed. Now if you're on the other end of things, you have magnesium levels that are far too high. A lot of people to fix those will use gypsum, that's calcium sulfate. The sulfate eventually, hopefully, is going to bind with some of the magnesium to form Epsom salts. Epsom salts are magnesium sulfate. Salts are leachable, so if you have good drainage, then all you do is leach out some of the magnesium and the sulfur and you've replaced that with calcium by using gypsum. Well, you certainly can fix a magnesium deficient soil or a soil that is excessive in magnesium. But what about a soil that promotes our weed of the week? What do you do about that? We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Grow your incentives, not weeds. Earn an additional $6 per acre in cash back when you apply Extendamax herbicide with Vapor Grip technology on your Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, along with endorsed herbicides from Roundup Ready plus Crop Management Solutions. Now you have the right tools to manage weeds and your bottom line. Visit GrowYourIncentives.com to see your total incentives opportunity. equipment parts for your machine your tractors and combines are your extra set of hands and day after day we'll keep you running your rag partner from sun up to sun now worthington egg parts quality people affordable parts m p and k they're critical for a healthy crop Improve their availability and your yield potential with Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant. Quick Roots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash Quick Roots. 
And now we have Jenny in the field talking with Farmer Dave. Thanks, Don. Dave, you're mid-harvest. What are you seeing from the combine? Are you happy with your choice of agri-liquid fertilizers? I like what I'm seeing. The weather didn't help much this year and we didn't get the rain when we needed it. But my yields are good and the test weights remain high. It helps that my agri-liquid fed crops are consistent across the field. So what are you thinking for next year? I'll be sticking with my agri-liquid team. Back to you, Don. Let's face it, Joe. Some of these guys aren't easy to play. Biologicals are expensive. Humates and plant growth regulators are messy. Yeah, but AgroLiquid has four new players that have really eliminated those problems. The Primer Go line has helped their team realize the benefits. Wait, so season-long nutrition and optimized yields while creating a biologically active soil? That's right. Primer Go line is a fantastic addition to AgroLiquid's stellar team. The last few years we've been talking about three pre's in soybeans. We want to explain that a little bit today and talk about how cost effective that can often be. Well, we talk about resistant weeds quite often and one of the toughest places to fight resistant broadleaf weeds is in a broadleaf crop like soybeans. So we've got palmer pigweed, we've got mare's tail, kochia, a number of these tough broadleaf type weeds. What do all these weeds have in common? Well, a couple things. One, we don't have many post-emerge options to control them. And two, we've got a bunch of pre-emerge options that are pretty effective on these weeds. And when used in combination, we can almost completely wipe them out. All right, let's talk first about the modes of action we want you to use pre-emerge. Well, the first one is we want you to use one of the yellows, uh, one of the DNAs. We love those products. They can't be used post-emerge. They can't be used in many other crops, especially the grass crops. So one of the old products like Treflan, Sonalan, or Prowl, very cost effective, have good activity on most of those broadleaves, excellent activity on grass also. In addition, we want you to go with Metribuzin. Okay, here again, Metribuzin can't be used post, can't be used in several other crops. Metribuzin is awesome, doesn't last real long in the soil. You just have to be a little concerned about what's your soil pH and how light is your soil. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then finally, use a PPO. Authority or Valor, not Sharpen, Authority or Valor because you can use a high rate in soybeans and leave yourself really good residuals. So there are three pre's, those are the ones we want you to use. Well, a couple of the big keys here. These pre's, we can't use them post-emerge in soybeans, so we're taking no post-emerge options off the table. We still have all the tools in our arsenal. We're, we're in good shape for post-emerge control. Now, you do have to plant the right herbicide tolerant crop for your area. We would suggest either Liberty Link, uh, Enlist when that becomes labeled, or Extend. Those would be really good options. But, you know, here's the thing, you can use those pre's even in conventional soybeans. So it doesn't really matter the trait, you can use these pre's and they don't take options away post. Okay, let's, before we get into exactly how to use these products and a little bit more about cost, let's talk about the pre's we don't want you to use. The first one is a group 15. Now I know there are a lot of people out there that want you to use a dual or a warrant or a zidua or something like that pre instead of a yellow. No way, no how. They're not even close to as good as the yellow is going to be. Plus they're more expensive. Plus we really have to worry about resistance because here's the thing. I kind of want you to use group 15 post in soybeans early post for residual, and I know I want you to use a group 15 in corn. So if you're in a corn soybean rotation, now we're already using it every year. Do we really want to use it pre in addition to a post application in soybeans and pre in corn? No way, I don't want to use it that many times. I'm really worried about resistance, so that's why I don't want the group 15. I'd also just as soon save products like Flexstar, Pursuit, First Rate, all those types of products for post-emerge use rather than burning them up pre. You can use them pre, but I'd prefer to use them post. All right, Brian, I'm gonna give you some of the feedback when we talk about three pre's. What I hear is, well, do I have to use a full rate of all three? And then how much is that going to cost me? Well, it all depends on what your situation is. So let's talk about each one of these things individually. The PPO, either Valor or Authority, yeah, I'm probably gonna want you to use a full rate or at least close to it. There's no reason not to. But when we start looking at the other two products, well, that's where I might wanna cut back. With Metribuzin, the full rate is actually two thirds of a pound. We rarely talk about anything more than one third of a pound. And if you've got high pH soil, it's probably one sixth of a pound. Now, if you've got really sandy conditions, we might be down to an eighth of a pound or a twelfth of a pound. So you gotta look at the rate, talk to your agronomist on that. And then we go to the yellows. I love Prowl and Sonalan at the full rate. With Trifluralin, I don't love it at the full rate because I get worried about carryover. 
if you go with a three quarter rate, pint and a half on trifluralin, dirt cheap, four bucks an acre, it's gonna work quite well for you. That's probably where I'm gonna settle on that. I'm probably gonna run two and a half, three ounces on Valor or the high rate on Authority. And then I'm probably going a third of a pound of Metribuzin on our farm. So grand total, I'm gonna spend maybe $14 an acre. It's not that much money. Yes, you'll spend more if you go to Sonalan or Prowl, but I'm just trying to say here, it's relatively inexpensive, especially when you consider another shot of a 2,4-D or Dicamba product post or even having any weeds out in that field. You need great weed control if you want top yields. Two things real quick, don't look at it as cost, look at it as a return on investment. For a bushel and a half of soybeans, you get unbelievable weed control. And second, if you've never done this before on your farm, try a field or try part of your farm, leave a check strip and see what happens doing it the old way versus using the three pre's. I'm confident that this will make you money on your farm. What I often talk to people about is 99.9% .9 weed control on many of the toughest resistant weeds. That's why I love the three pre program. Even if you have something good post-emerge, it really thins out the weeds. You can spray a little bit later and you don't have to count solely on that post-emerge product and you almost always will have higher yields. And regardless of where our Weed of the Week is growing, we'll show you how to stop it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> is wild cucumber. Yeah, Brian, you should know a little bit about wild cucumber. You've had I, this growing around your place. Yeah, unfortunately, when I look at my evergreen trees, that's where wild cucumber likes to grow. I don't know exactly why, but it always shows up there, and it's a vine. It'll go way up into that evergreen tree. So on a fairly regular basis, around my place, I am scouting my trees. And if I see any wild cucumber, I just pull it. It's as simple as that. Well, that's one of the things that, that you can do with wild cucumbers, just pull them. Now, if you happen to catch them before they're vining up the side of an evergreen tree where you can't really spray a herbicide, you could use a herbicide to try to control them. Many farmers will use one of the new 2,4-Ds that has the new 2,4-D choline in it or using a dicamba product in the appropriate way. The reason why the 2,4-D choline is so important, we've seen very little, if any, volatility out of those products rather than the old 2,4-D. Don't even think about using the old 2,4-D around trees. That's not real good. Use the new 2,4-D. You'll have far fewer problems with leaf drop and damaging the tree. That's all the time we have for this week's Weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Anserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Introducing the Soil Max ZD48, the newest addition to the Soil Max Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The Soil Max ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. 
I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. Grow your incentives, not weeds. Earn an additional $6 per acre in cash back when you apply Extendamax herbicide with Vapor Grip technology on your Roundup Ready to Extend soybeans, along with endorsed herbicides from Roundup Ready Plus Crop Management Solutions. Now you have the right tools to manage weeds and your bottom line. Visit GrowYourIncentives.com to see your total incentives opportunity. Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Downed corn is tough to harvest, but what do you do after harvest to clean things up and avoid the problem for next year? I'll discuss it in today's Iron Talk. If you had some corn go down this year and possibly even drop some ears, that's a tough situation. Now you've got to prep that field for the next crop and make some plans to avoid it happening again. Here are a few observations from downed corn this fall. Long stalks laying every which way are a challenge for many types of operations. In our strip-till system, we even had a little challenge in fields where the tops fell off the corn, dealing with those longer pieces compared to where our chopping corn head had everything sized up to just a few inches long. Coulter carts of various sizes or vertical tillage will do a nice job sizing that residue up so it flows through your next strip-till pass or your deep tillage pass better. Now, if anthracno stock rot was the main culprit, rotating away from corn next year is a good strategy, and picking a more tolerant hybrid is key as well, as many of the fungicides don't have great activity on anthracnose. We saw stock rots especially bad in areas that had excessive spring moisture, insufficient drainage tile, corn rootworm feeding, and especially with anthracnose when we had stressful conditions right at or after pollination. The key to avoiding it in the future is improving plant health throughout the season to build tolerance to all plant diseases. In some cases, there were other causes for lodging an eardrop that must be addressed. Planting population may have been too high for the fertility levels in the field. If your yield per 1,000 seeds planted is less than 7, then you likely overplanted. Make adjustments to your fertility program and planting populations going into next year to avoid a similar fate. Downed corn is bad, and if there's still time to clean things up this fall, vertical tillage can often be a big help. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. That's our time for today, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show at 2 p.m. Central each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Did you realize that a healthy soil only contains about 50% dirt? In order for the soil microbes and plants to work together properly, soil should contain 25% air and 25% water. Today's farming practices are designed around maintaining that healthy balance. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.